This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're thinking of creating a website or giving your existing site a fresh new look, check them out. They make it fast and fun to create a professional looking cutting edge website. They have super easy drag and drop content and exquisitely designed templates. Plus, they have 24 7 support located in New York City and Dublin, so you can get help any time of day or night. Start a trial with no credit card and start building your website today. And if you use the offer code BLUE, you get 10% off. Go to squarespace.com slash blue to get you started. Thanks Squarespace for supporting Blue Lightning TV. Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. We're going back in time to create your own classic retro B-horror movie title from the 1950s. I included a Photoshop file for you to download so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video description or project files. It includes this photo, a vintage Paramount Pictures studio credit, and two textures of film scratches. I'll click off the eyeballs next to the top three layers to hide them, and I'll click on the thumbnail of the background to make it active. Click on the Adjustment Layer icon. If you're working on versions CS6 or CC, click Color Lookup. If you're working on a version earlier than CS6, I'll explain what to do in a minute. Click Load 3D LUT and choose Night from Day dot cube. Reduce its opacity to 80%. Click back on the Adjustment Layer icon and this time choose Black and White. On versions earlier than CS6, press Ctrl or Command Shift U to remove all the color and then press Ctrl or Command L to open your levels window. In the Output Highlights setting, type in 113, then click OK. Open your Horizontal Type tool and pick an eerie looking font. I'm using a font called Green Fuzz. If you'd like to use it, you can download it from the link I provided. I'll choose a size of 150 points, Sharp, and Center Alignment. Click on the color box and type in 50% for brightness and 0 for the hue and saturation. This gives us a temporary neutral gray so you can see your text. Click OK or press Enter or Return. Type out your text. To increase the size of a character, highlight it and type in a larger point size. To shift characters down or up, highlight them and go to Window and Character. The Character panel will open. Slide the Baseline Shift icon to the left or right to shift the characters down or up. To slide the entire word to the left or right, place your cursor to the left of the first character and hold down Alt or Option as you press the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. I'll increase the point size of the first character of my top word to 200 points. To open or close the amount of space between two characters, place your cursor between them and hold down Alt or Option as you press the right or left arrow key. To slide an entire word up or down, highlight it and slide the letting icon to the left or right. We can close the character panel now. To reposition your text, open your Move tool and move it. Double click on the large T of the text layer to highlight your text and then click on the Create Warped Text icon. Choose Rise, tick Horizontal, and change the bend to 10%, then click OK. To center it on your document, open your Move tool, 
Press Ctrl or Command A to select it and then click the Align Horizontal Centers icon and the Align Vertical Centers icon. To deselect it, press Ctrl or Command D. Click the FX icon and choose Gradient Overlay. The Blend Mode is Normal, the Opacity is 100%, the Style is Linear, and make the Angle 90 degrees. Click the Gradient Bar and click the Lower Right Stop. For the location, type in 80%. This moves the stop to a location at 80%, which shifts the white down a bit on the gradient. Click the lower left stop and the color box. For brightness, type in 50 and 0 for saturation and hue, or you can just type in 80 three times. Close the color picker and the gradient editor. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, the technique is Chisel Hard, the depth is 100%, the direction is Up, and the size is 5 pixels. Make the Highlight Opacity 100% and the Shadow Opacity 0. Then click Contour and click OK. Click the icon at the upper right corner of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. You know it's a smart object when you see this icon at the lower right corner of the thumbnail. Converting it to a smart object does two things. It allows us to add filters to it that we wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't a smart object, and two, it will allow us to change the text without reapplying all the effects and filters. I'll show you how to access and change the smart object near the end of this video. If you want to stretch the title out, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to the middle of a side, and when you see a horizontal double arrow, hold down Shift and Alt on Windows, or Shift and Option on a Mac as you drag the Transform out. Then press Enter or Return to accept it. Make three copies of your title by pressing Ctrl or Command J three times. Name the top copy Original, the copy below it Motion Blur, the next copy Radial Blur Short, and the bottom title Radial Blur Long. Go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. Make the amount 100, the Blur Method Zoom, and the Quality Best. Then click OK. We'll decrease the Blur's opacity to 50%. Make the Radial Blur Short layer active and go back to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. This time make the amount 25 and change the Blend Mode to Soft Light. Make Motion Blur active and go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Rotate the line on the dial to a similar angle as your text. Make the distance 10 pixels. As I toggle back and forth, you can see the difference. It adds a subtle off-registered blur that vintage black and white movies often have. Next, we'll add a foggy mist to the marsh. Make the original layer active and click the new layer icon to make a new layer above it. We'll fill it with black. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, click this icon. Then press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the empty layer with the foreground color. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Change the Blend Mode to Overlay. I'd like to stretch the mist horizontally, so I'll open the Transform tool, and for the width, I'll type in 200%. Make sure the chain link doesn't have a dark box behind it. If it does, just click on it so the width and the height aren't linked to each other. Then press Enter or Return. Next, we'll make the bottom of the title more transparent so it looks like it's emerging from the marsh. Make the original layer active 
and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. Click the foreground color and pick black. Then click OK. Open your brush tool. Choose a relatively large size, a hardness of 0%, and make the opacity 80%. Press the F5 key at the top of your keyboard to open your brush panel. Make sure nothing is checked but smoothing. Press F5 again to close the panel. Now brush across the bottom of your title to reveal the background. We'll copy the layer mask to the motion blur layer by holding down Alt or Option as you drag the layer mask straight down next to motion blur. To give our 1950s movie title its finishing touches, make the studio credits visible, as well as the two textures. Make the top texture active, go to the layer below it, and shift click on it to highlight that layer as well. Change their blend modes to multiply. Next, I'll show you how to quickly change the name of your movie title and have it update all the effects and filters automatically. Scroll down and click on the thumbnail of your original title layer. Then shift click on the radial blur long layer to highlight all the layers in between. Press Ctrl or Command G to place all the highlighted layers into a folder. Name it whatever you'd like. Open the folder and click on a thumbnail of any smart object. When you see this message, click OK. To ensure that your new movie title is going to fit, we need to reduce its size in the document. Open your Transform tool, go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, hold down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you drag it in. Then press Enter or Return. Double click on the layer to highlight the text and type out your new title using the same methods that you used for your first title to adjust its kerning, letting, size, and baseline shift. Open your Transform tool to enlarge its size in the document. Click the small X on the tab of the Smart Object to close it, and when you see this message, click Yes to confirm the changes. Notice the Smart Object instantly applied all the filters, effects, and layer styles from your original title. To fit it onto your document, click on the folder and open your Transform tool. When you see this message, it lets you know that the smart filters will be applied after you use your transform tool. Click OK. Adjust its size and width to taste, and then click the check mark or press Enter or Return. Remember, a better web starts with your website. Go to squarespace.com blue and use your offer code blue to get your 10% off. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.